Forward to land expropriation without compensation. Forward. Forward to land expropriation without compensation. Forward. Forward. Uh, the leadership of the ANC Youth League, led by Deputy President Desmond Mohela. Should I proceed or should I sit down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, the leadership of the ANC, led by my dear comrade and sister, Comrade Sasekani Manzini, leadership of the, NEC, of the PC, of the ANC Youth League, led by Comrade Tim Mashele, leadership of the REC, led by Imboroto, Comrade Precious Tonga, leadership of branches, Siabongasi African National Congress Youth League, goodness afford the opportunity, you would see Zokuluma Nanamusa. A topic labeled Legega Kulgangara, lay land expropriation without compensation. Comrade Sasekane makes a very important point to say as the ANC Youth League, we have a bad tendency of not claiming our victories. This discussion of land expropriation without compensation in the African National Congress was brought back to the agenda by the ANC Youth League in 2010 NGC and the 2011 National Conference. Those who read those discussion documents, Comrade Tim, will know that it is cardinal pillar number one in the seven pillars of economic freedom. So today, we are continuing with that struggle which was started by the prestigious generation of 2011. Now, when Comrade Morris said I must come here today, he gave me a set of questions which I must respond to, or what he called guiding questions. He, the first one he says, we must speak to members of the ANC Youth League and say to them, what is this expropriation of land without compensation? Mwabagune tendency organization, yogutisfune kulama concepts na complicated, singawa understand, huta shok team. So ERC yen namuta, is the bell too, but nobody is always discussing the concepts. Since the show, we don't get to understand. No, we just want to start in. What Comrade Morrissey? Let me ask my question. The funa si answer is just like a muta. But will this land expropriation without compensation adversely affect the investment? Moba my liberals, or laba laba opposed to the agenda here too. Laba fana na boli kota na boti a. But if Utata Umshaba Evanduin, or Utata Umshaba Ebelungwin, or Nigaband Labam Yama, who affect her investment in South Africa negatively. Namusa Sizela has to clarify some of those issues. Comrade Morris again guided with the REC, gave guidance on a very important matter. They say to us, and this is a very thorny matter, Comrade Morris, the one that says, Who are the original owners of this land? Bautis Muisela Banigas, Shoboban. And you would know that in history as a South Africa, it's contested. Some will say the original people here were the Koi and the Sands. Aksingi, to some out of the Koi, Nemasen. Others, Africaners have rewritten history. They say there was no one here when they arrived. So it means that when we take it back, we must give it back to them again. Of course, that is madness, but it is written. But they write it all the time. So that is why you are here today, comrades. Comrades, this topic is extremely important for it to take place here in Bushabela. You know, Comrade Sasekane and Comrade Deputy President of the ANC Youth League, last year the statistician general, Ubabu Pali Magapuma, gave us a report on the state of young people in South Africa. And he makes a very painful observation. He says that amongst the worst municipalities which are affected by youth unemployment, in last corner, Namusa, a pushback ridge. He says that 87% of young people in this place do not work. Usho hut bant lava asha mabashel by 10, kseven za loyu wan, lele nina na isebenz. And that's a very painful situation. So this discussion of land expropriation without compensation, angege uze uiti linke to the issue of economic transformation and the entire struggle of economic freedom in our lifetime. It is a very important part of this struggle. That is why we said it is cardinal pillar number one. There are authors who write very well about the link between the history of land in South Africa and how economic freedom, how it was used to accumulate eco the economy for a minority. 
The first one to say, to, for the first of these authors, I think some of you will note it down, is the late Sampri Telebranch in a book where he writes the history of inequality. In that book, he writes why were we dispossessed land and how did it affect our economic status. In a book called The History of Liberation in South Africa. And in that book, where Omkav again writes, you'll understand why did they take land from us, why is the color of rich and privilege and wealth white, and why is the color of poverty black. At the center of that is the issue of land comrades. The issue of land comrades is at the core of our struggle. Comrade Sasekane put it succinctly very well when she said the formation of the ANC was also about, about fighting the wars of dispossession. It was to say to African people, send you have lost, you were defeated, land was taken away. Let us now unite and fight as the African race. That was at the core of the struggle. That is at the core of our struggle. So any member of the ANC you click and member of the ANC, when he fights this struggle, he's fighting the struggle to regain our land. In 19, I think in 1968, the ANC writes a pamphlet. At the time, the Secretary General was still Comrade Walter Sassoon. The, the pamphlet is titled that we are at war. One of the things that that pamphlet says, we are fighting for the control of the land of South Africa. That is the struggle of the ANC. We get it from those from those history books, comrades. Comrades, when we deal with the issue of land, Comrade Precious made mention of the 1913 Land Act. I think it is important for us to note that this possession or the struggle to protect our land by Africans did not start in 1913. When 1913, they were only formalizing it in June, it was in June. They were only formalizing it. The struggle started when our colonizers arrived in Africa. From the day they arrived, they were engaged in a war to dispossess. And we want to put it to the leadership of the ANC that we have over time been using the word, they stole, they stole, they stole. Our understanding as the ANC Youth League is that they did not steal this land, they committed a heist to take our land because they took it through the barrel of a gun. When I steal your phone, come to I wait for you to go to the toilet and I take it and I put it in my pocket. But if I come to you now, as we are sitting here with a gun and take your phone, that is robber or I'm committing a heist. And that is what our colonizers did when they came to South Africa. This land was not stolen, complain. they killed our forefathers and took it away from them. That we must register. So there was blood for this land to be taken away from us. The important question that we must answer, the ANC is trying to guide us and say to us, we can get it back through legislative means. We also believe that as the ANC youth league, but we must also not ignore the genuine voices which are saying, will it be possible for the land to come back without blood? That is a generational call which you must answer and make. Because as things stand, we just said to them, we want to hear what South Africans think. Afri Forum flew and went to all over the world to tell them that they want to commit white genocide. So if you are conceptualizing those events and the response of Africaners and the response of landowners, you will understand that by legislative means alone, we might not be able to get our land back. But it is, a, it is something worth trying, comrades. Comrades, you see, when the land, 19, by 1800, they were black farmers already. When the 1913 Land Act was to be passed in Parliament, they were already black farmers. And the 1913 Land Act did not come because of some white man who was intelligent somewhere. It was white farmers who campaigned for this Land Act. And the campaign or the petition which they submitted to Parliament and a parliamentarian from the Orange Free State at the time, you will recall, was Bernabo Transvaal, Orange Free State, the colonies, had two elements, or amongst them were two elements. The first element was to say that the fact that there were black people who were owning land limited labor in South Africa. Because they discovered a mine in Mount Diamond in Kimberley and gold in what we call Johannesburg today. And they wanted cheap labor. So for them to get cheap labor, they had to dispossess us our land. 
they had to take away our land and for us to stay in crowded places such that all of us, when it's January, we must say, I'm going to look for a job. That is what they did, comrades. They dispossessed us of our land because they wanted cheap labor. The second matter, which is very central, is they took away our land or what they were campaigning for. At the time, after the 1910 Union of South Africa, voting in South Africa was only done by those who had property. So you only voted if you had property. It was not like now with Masona 18 year old. So they said that if you allow black people to own land, you are giving them a right to vote. And if you allow them to buy more land, it means that you are increasing their ability to vote and one day they will take this government of the then Union of South Africa. And as a result, you had to take away the land, you had to take away the land from them, comrades. So those are part of the reason. So the issue of land in South Africa has got two elements. We call it a social, a social political economic issue. It has got a political issue which dealt about the issue of voting. It has got social economics, which is at the central of it, which dealt about how, how we, how black, how, what is the status of black people in this economy. Now, comrades, we all know, comrade Tasegane spoke to us. She said, in the past 24 years, from 1994, the ANC has been trying to return land back to its rightful owners. And comrade Morris, I don't think our preoccupation should be about who are its rightful owners as the ANC. Because as the ANC, we are not a racist organization or an organization that, uh, that, that, that gives prejudice. We are not like as those who say as a near. There's a difference between us and them. We are very different. So, as the ANC, what are we saying? We are saying this land must belong to the state. The state will give it to people as and when they need it. That is what we are saying. It's a simple matter. That is what we are saying. So, we are not saying that way if you have a fantonder who is able to farm, is giving us evidence that he can farm and produce food and pay workers well, we are not going to give it to him. But we are fighting against the situation that there is a man who is sitting somewhere in England, who is sitting somewhere in Saudi Arabia, has never set foot in Pushback Ridge, has only seen that land on Google Maps and say, this is my land. That is what we are fighting against. We are all sitting in corners, we are cramped, we are sitting in cramped spaces in townships, there's no places to build, to build houses, we are even building it as in the endless demand, since it's in Kanin because there's no land. And yet, a person in England who has never been to South Africa owns land. And that is, the, that is what we are fighting against, and that's what we mean. So, comrades, Comrade Sasegane gave us statistics. The statistics are clear. Whites only form 9% of the population of South Africa, but they own more than 42% of the land. Blacks form about 78% of the population, but they only own 9% of the land. It, that, and that is the land which includes Ingonyama Trust. It cannot be like that, comrades. We just cannot allow that situation to proceed, comrades. And this, comrades, as I said earlier, is very similar to how the economy is owned and controlled in South Africa. There is a very dialectical relationship or connectedness between land and how the economy of South Africa is controlled. Because if you go to the JSE, shares of black people combined do not exceed 87%. 87% of those shares are white. Black only own 13%, which is what the 1913 Land Act wanted. The 1913 Land Act had said that blacks must own 13% of the land and whites must own uh, 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 87%. And that is at the core of our struggle, and that is what we have all been about. The debate is continuing, comrades, to say how do we achieve this? We are a bit uncomfortable as the ANC, we must put it, that it took the ANC... And some of these comrades who are in the ANC are lawyers, many of them, just by the way, are lawyers have been sitting in the National Executive Committee of the ANC 25 years to discover that it is possible to expropriate without compensation and not change the constitution. We don't think that's an honest debate. And just by the way, Udi Khan Musenek, before he left, he said to them, bring it on. Let me test this matter. They did not do it. Now when it is time to change the constitution, they say no. And it is, there's a consistent pattern in the ANC. You know, in South Africa, we are the only revolution, or if we were to call ourselves that we went through a revolution, or the transition, where the exploiter or the colonizer did not lose anything. That's South Africa, 
All we got was able to remove boards, non blankies, Kian blankies, whatever, whatever. I am able to go to a school in town. I'm able to buy a house in Hazy View. I'm able to stay in Steltas and those things and those things. But the reality of the matter, <laughs> the reality of the matter, comrades, is that uh, in economic terms, our lives have not changed. So I was saying to the ANC, as the youth league, when we go to these. Uh, public hearings. And I'm challenged, Comrade Sasekane spoke uh, uh, correct and said, Comrade Tim and REC, RECs, you must go and make a case for the ANC Youth League in those public hearings. You must write as RECs, go and sit down there and say, we are making a case for the African National Congress Youth League. And the case which the ANC Youth League will be making, I know that the National Executive Committee is going to make that case through Comrade Joy. I think she has already submitted. Well, the, well our case is clear. We want land to be expropriated without compensation, and we feel that can only happen if you amend certain sections of Section 25. But that's a debate that can continue. But comrades, why do we want this land so much? That's the most important thing, because if we don't understand that, we are not going to be, have the conviction to fight for this thing. If you don't understand why do you want this land, if you see this land because you've not been exposed to what land does, you will think that, ah, in your sense, I I'm not rather do this thing. So one of the things that we want this land for, complete, is that we want this land for farming and food security. Reports in South Africa say that more than 40% of our population live below the poverty line. And that was not the case when South Africans owned land. That was not the case when South Africans were farming for themselves. It happens. You can start a garden in your own house. Uzaja mafodisi, uze kabishi, uze uze mazamba. Mwashala mshambi nyamu ngayishi, mwaba unazinku. But you will have food. And as things stand, we have that challenge in South Africa. There's an issue of food security. So we want farmers. And there's also research, comrades, that farmers in South Africa are old white men. They are dying. Farmers in South Africa are old white men. We want to produce a new generation of farmers, and amongst that generation of young farmers must be black women. I'm happy that there's a lot of women here, Comrade Sasekan, because people who work land in South Africa, more than 73% of them are women. That is what statistics South Africa tells us. So that is why we are saying to you, comrades, we want this land such that we produce a new generation of farmers, and this generation of farmers, in its majority, must be women. We want this land, Comrade Morris, for economic development and growth. The question, one of the questions you said we must answer is to say, will it adversely affect our economy or will it diminish economic investment? And the answer is clear. In South Africa, we have many young people who have business ideas, some in farming, but they do not have the, the, land, the land to go and farm. Some young people want to set up factories, but they do not have the money to, the land where they can set up these factories. When you go to a bank for anything, they tell you that as collateral, we want to bring, give us land, or what they call immovable property. So if we can get land, we would have given our people what basic economics teaches us, that land is a factor of production. So I, I don't see it in any way affect, adversely affecting the economy of South Africa. If anything, it will introduce new participants in the economy of South Africa. We want this land, comrades, to build basic things like dams. You know, comrades, in South Africa, we have a very funny situation. And I know that people of this area will relate to that situation. Many of our people do not have access to water. But we have people that own dams. Individual, And if you can ask him, hey, chief, can you give us minutes with where God gave you this dam? He don't, does not have it. But because he had access to that land when they killed our people and took it forceful, that dam belongs to him. Before 2002, when the Minerals and Petroleum Development Act, these people owned gold. gold, In the crisis, the economy is not doing well. Oh, die. This one I'm going to mine when everything is finished, when the price of gold is at its highest. That's when I'm going to mine. At that time, the country is losing jobs. So those are the reasons why we want this land, comrades. We want this land to build houses and to build public infrastructure. South Africa, we are 
Land is a thorny issue. Mau funa kwa kai tini ke South Africa au ya tupega. Land is a thorny issue. There are areas that are not in the same way. The people who are in the same way are in the same way. And the people who are in the same way are in spaceless empty. Scone, so own young man, Baba, and I told the chief in 1973. And what let's see the bazaar at 10 and I. Upper chief, no moon. No moon, it is still owned by white people. The land, they do not have, the, 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 the government cannot use that land to build a clinic. Maunga ya huye lo muntu mbuzo kuti hii ni plani ya kwa ngale kini, he can't tell you. We want this land to give our people human, decent human settlement. And this one affects all types of people in South Africa. There's a group of teachers, nurses, uh, prison warders and police. We, are, we say that they are too rich to, have, to be given an RTP, they are too poor to qualify for bonds. Banks do not give them bonds in towns. And at the center of the cost drivers, of housing in South Africa is the land. So if the state has got this land, it will be able to give them that, those bonds at a cheaper price, or they can go to bank and get at a cheaper price. Not is telling my camera and my guy who my back rooms today. No matter who's so bambi and I'm bambi call, but you cannot be able to build a house over stand is at all. I'm sure in next break they are above 100,000. Very expensive, just a piece of land who no one can account for. Those are the real issues that we are saying. That is why we need land. The state has got a problem when it wants to build houses, RTP houses, as no land. Those are real issues and why we want land, comrades. So at the center of this struggle of land must be young people because we are going to be the biggest beneficiaries of this struggle and we have concluded a struggle that took place for many years. If we win this battle of land expropriation without compensation, and land is given to its rightful owners, who would have honored Ngungunyane, who would have honored Mshweshwe, who would have honored Himsa, who would have honored Kukune, who have honored Tingan, and the many warriors on whose shoulders we stand. So it is our responsibility as a generation. Would give a wrong kind of a mistake, let's win Z. Let us take this national grievance or this grievance that the African people have been fighting for for many years and take it to its logical conclusion take the land, put it in the hands of the state, and allow the state to distribute it to the people of South Africa based on needs. Thank you very much, comrades. Amanda.